My name is uh, Grant Collins. I'm a member of Iraq Veterans Against the War. Um, I was a corporal in the 1st Battalion, 23rd Marines. Um, was in Iraq from August of 04 to May of 05. A few months after I was there, I mean, a lot of things weren't sitting right with me. The the the, the command structure, the, the missions that we were getting didn't make any sense. We're going after people, Mujahideen or Muj, and uh, they didn't have any idea which ones were the right ones. We're kicking in the wrong doors. Terrifying children, helicopters screaming uh, over their heads at night, and, and I'm trying to calm the women and children while the men were dragged and separated out and, and uh, completely humiliated in front of their families. Uh, in that culture, it's a very big deal to be treated with respect in front of your family, just as it is in ours. But in this, I mean, it can mean a lot of shame. When I really, really, really came to the point where I knew that we, what we were doing was absolutely morally wrong was when, um, well, a few days, everybody knows, <laughs> a few days after Bush was re-elected, we um, are allegedly re-elected. Um, <laughs> we... <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, we began, uh, we had already cordoned off Fallujah, and um, Chloe was in the uh, first incursion in in April, uh, where we, we took heavy casualties and then decided that maybe it wasn't the right time to go in. Maybe there's too many of them in there. So we, I was a part of the cordon where we cordoned it off and then we made operations to move in. And Two o'clock in the morning, we went across the berm and instantly started taking casualties, but started lighting up the city like you wouldn't believe. Um, artillery strikes going in and uh, planes flying in and, and dropping 500-pound JDAM bombs into obviously civilian areas. I mean, my platoon was tasked with uh, moving down a certain sector from the north side of the city and we, of course we had to take every building block that we went through and we had already come up to a, uh, an, a like a four four story like apartment building and we had encountered heavy resistance from there and uh, there was no way that, that we were going to be able to clear it with using people so we we called an airstrike on it well a, a helicopter strike with it and after a couple of them the building just completely collapsed in um, and I was thinking at the time when that the, how many civilians could have been inside there. I mean, just like any kind of conflict, there's people that are hiding inside of places that are unable to come out of these buildings out of fear that they're going to be killed by the enemy or our enemy for leaving or out of fear that they're going to get shot in the streets because when they do, they come out and they, they do get shot in the streets trying to get away. We moved down another block and we came up to a smaller building and my squad was uh, tasked with taking this building and the doorway it was fire coming out of the doorway machine gun fire and from the windows so I had a an attachment of SMAs which are rockets like two-man team of rockets and um, you can use these rockets to blow holes make another doorway if you will in the side of the building to so uh, I gave the order for them to use the missiles on the building. So we hit it. And uh, then we stormed into the building. And there was, uh, there was um, two 14, well, looked about a 14 year old kid, a six year old kid, and a young, uh, maybe a, this could have been her husband, I couldn't tell because he was so messed up, and a woman that was bleeding, but not. Not severely, and all she was, she was screaming, why, laish, laish, and, um, and I, I broke down, I, I, I leaned up against the wall, and I, as, as my rest of my Marines cleared through the building, and I sat there with a the corpsman trying to do something about it, but I started to cry, I started to cry, I wanted to rip my hair out, what hair I did have, and go nuts. And the woman seeing my reaction, 
came up to me and put her hand on my cheek and said, Inshallah, which is God's will. Because these people over there, it doesn't matter what bad things happen to them, that they'll, 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 they can accept it right away as God's will because they're deeply religious. But no, it wasn't God's will. It was my fucking order. I gave, the, I gave the order to fire those rockets into that building and I killed her family. And uh, that's when I knew that I was put in a situation where I had to do that. I thought I had to do that to keep my, myself and my Marines alive, thinking that, well, man, that was the best thing I could do at the time. Well, well I have to live with that um, decision. The, uh, from then on, I, well, of course we had the rest of that battle to go through and I saw more, 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 more casualties, more civilians being killed. Well, I don't know, I've been, I've been here a couple times, um, I've had to go back, I went back to Grand Rapids, Michigan uh, to start school, but uh, when Lauren told me that she wanted to come back, I, uh, I, I had to come back. Um, on the 26th of August, I lost another friend. Um, he was uh, on his third tour. And uh, the thing is that it's making me really upset is now it's, I'm starting to, their names are all blending together now. And uh, she asked what his name was, and I gave her a, a name, a, a wrong first name and a wrong last name. And uh, it's just, and then I had a dream after all this, and I saw him in my dream, and he, in his typical joking attitude, said that I was fresh out of friends. <laughs> I needed to make some new ones. <laughs> He's joking around like he used to always say stupid shit like that. And uh, anyway, it's uh, it's it's my duty now. It, it, it is my duty uh, t to stand up and speak, and I will do this until this war is over. Uh, that's all I have.